An interesting group of objects carved in wood, which we find in the British Museum collections, are game boards for the game called by the Creole name Worry, but sometimes also referred to as Mankala. Uh, this is a very ancient game which has been played for hundreds of years and which is found all over Africa in different forms and even beyond Africa itself. Uh, the basic form of the game boards is uh, a number of cups carved out of a single piece of wood in which seeds or shells are placed and in which two players compete against one another to win the larger number of shells or seeds. The constant features of the boards from Sierra Leone are that you have two rows of cups, six cups on each side, and then two larger cups on either side in which you put the shells or the seeds that you have won. This is a relatively simple example which came to the British Museum around the middle of the 19th century. It stands on a solid wooden base. There is, however, a great scope for carving skill and virtuosity, even fantasy, in the carving of these boards. For example, on this one, the board itself, with its cups, stands on an openwork base, as I say, carved from a single piece of wood. You also have here a kind of wooden bottle, hollow bottle, in which the seeds or the shells would be kept when the game is not being played. In this case, uh, the bottom of the bottle is open. It would be, of course, uh, covered so that the, the seeds or shells would be kept safe. The scope <coughs> for virtuosity of carving in these game boards can be seen in two examples. In this one, the board itself is carved <coughs> as part of the carving of a, a cart such as would have been used in 19th century Freetown, early 20th century Freetown in the market. So the, the actual wheels of the cart, the framework of the cart, has been carved from a single piece of wood. You have the, the uh, cups for the playing of the game on the top, and once again you have carved as part of this a kind of wooden bottle or container into which the, the seeds or shells are placed. Another example of an extremely elaborate board is this worry board um, in which the carver has carved a very complex framework with pillars, with linked chains, with a little box carved in the centre for the reception of the seats, um, with uh, a, a decorative base where the carving represents um, weaving. Uh, you can see running round the board and around the cups at the end, these little bumps or protuberances 
which are almost certainly intended to represent uh, furniture, brass furniture nails, which were used uh, in the late 19th century, in the early 20th century, to decorate um, wood carving. So in this case, the, the carver didn't have the, 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 uh, the furniture nails, but he has represented them by carving them in wood. Though it's not easy to see, there are also two birds with long necks and wings carved in the centre of the board. So it's a demonstration of the woodcarver's virtuosity. And perhaps this was in particular carved uh, in, in order to be sold to Europeans. Now let's turn to the game itself, how it's played and its rules. Initially, you have 48 pieces distributed evenly over the 12 cups. So there are four pieces, in this case shells and seeds, in each of the four cups. The players take it in turn to make moves. It requires a certain mathematical competence and also the ability to foresee the consequences of yours and your opponent's moves, three or four or more uh, moves in advance. Each move consists of taking the shells in one of the cups on your own side and distributing them one, 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 one uh, in an anti-clockwise direction. You can only move shells on your own side. Uh, you can't move shells on your opponent's side. Um, now, initially, not a great deal will happen because you'll simply be distributing, you'll simply be taking it in turns to distribute the seeds around your own side and going round to your opponent's side. But after a while, you will find sometimes that there will be a single uh, piece or two pieces on your opponent's side. And then, if you count, I have five now here, so if I then distribute these, one, two, three, four, now I then end on my opponent's side in a cup which is either one or two seats, then I win those seats and I put them in my own cup to the right of me. Uh, people sometimes describe this in terms of the 19th century wars as you capturing the enemy's town and taking its inhabitants. So it was seen in terms of war and slavery. Now, you can only win where there is one or two seeds left in, on your opponent's side. You can only win the pieces on your opponent's side. Um, now, I've spoken of the case where there were two seeds there for, and your last seed landed, leaving two or three. So you, you take those and win those. Now, what can sometimes happen after the game has been played for a while is that you have a very uneven distribution and you have a great many seeds left. Um, one hole it might be on your side. And then you move these around and this is where it becomes complicated because you have to anticipate the possible effects. Now, I haven't done it in this case, but let's see what happens. One, two, three, four, five, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now this was the hole I started, so I missed that one out. If I'm coming back, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, I have too many in this case because I would then end up here, so I don't win any. But let's supposing that my last. A piece went into that hole and then not only do I win that but there, is, there were two or three in the next hole so I win that there were two or three in that hole so I win that 
there were two or three in that, and so I win that, and so I win a great many just in making one move. So you have to anticipate what the effects of leaving gaps or only single pieces on your own side might be, bearing in mind the, the distribution of the pieces. So in that case, not only did I win all the pieces in one hole, I won all the pieces on that side. So the winner of the game is the person who has the most seats at the end. So if I have more than half of the seats, I've won more than half of the seats, then I have won that game. Um, to play it simply is, 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 is easy enough. Uh, when you're up against someone who's very skilled and experienced in the game, it's very hard to win against them.